7 Eastern, live now to the U.S. House for legislative business. They'll be working on two bills, one dealing with private property rights and another on eminent domain issues. Votes at 6.30. And now live to the House floor. Take it tomorrow. Chair will clarify record votes will be uh, taken at 6.30 today. Purpose does a gentleman from Texas rise. Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and concur in the Senate Amendment to H.R. 347, the Federal Restricted Buildings and Grounds Improvement Act of 2011. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 347, an act to correct <coughs> and simplify the drafting of Section 1752 relating to restricted buildings or grounds of Title 18 <coughs> United States Code, Senate Amendment. Pursuant to the rule of the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Smith, 
and the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Johnson, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on the Senate Amendment to H.R. 347 currently under consideration. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, H.R. 347, the Federal Restricted Buildings and Grounds Improvements Act of 2011, introduced by Congressman Tom Rooney, makes common sense improvements to an existing federal law that prohibits unlawful access to the White House, the Vice President's residence, and other restricted areas. Current law prohibits unlawful entr entries upon any restricted building or ground where the President, Vice President, or other protectee is temporarily visiting. However, there is no federal law that expressly prohibits unlawful entry to the White House and its grounds or the Vice President's residence and its grounds. The United States Secret Service must therefore rely upon a provision in the District of Columbia Code which addresses only minor misdemeanor infractions when someone attempts to or successfully climbs the White House fence or worse, breaches the White House itself. H.R. 347 remedies this problem. It specifically includes the White House, the Vice President's residence, and their respective grounds in the definition of restricted buildings and grounds. The bill also clarifies that the penalties in Section 1752 of Title 18 apply to those who knowingly enter or remain in any restricted building or grounds without lawful authority to do so. Current law does not include this important element. The House passed this bill one year ago by a vote of 399 to 3. Earlier this month, the Senate passed the bill by unanimous consent. The Senate also clarified that the revised law applies to individuals the Secret Service is required to protect by statute or by presidential memorandum. H.R. 347 ensures that the President, the First Family, the Vice President, and others are protected whether they are in the White House or attending an event in a convention center or meeting hall. I commend my colleague from Florida, Mr. Rooney, for sponsoring this legislation, which enjoys overwhelming bipartisan, bicameral support. I urge my colleagues to support this bill, and I'll reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Texas reserves his time. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of H.R. 347 as amended by the Senate, which will assist the Secret Service in performing their prospective duties or their protective duties. The bill before us today will help the Secret Service carry out its role in protecting the President, Vice President, and other dignitaries. Current federal law prohibits individuals from entering or remaining in areas cordoned off as restricted because of protection being provided by the Secret Service. This bill would simply clarify that the prohibition under the existing statute only applies to those who do not have lawful authority to be in those areas. The bill also would add the White House and Vice President's residence to the definition of restricted areas protected under current law. The Senate made minor changes to the bill, including expanding the bill's protections to areas in which the Secret Service is protecting a person by direction of a presidential memorandum. I support this amendment. This bill will assist the Secret Service, which did not have this protective function when it was created. The role of the Secret Service has expanded greatly since it was established in 1865 to fight the counterfeiting of U.S. currency. The service became part of the Treasury Department in 1883 and took on many additional investigative responsibilities with respect to safeguarding the payment and financial systems of the United States. It wasn't until 1894 that the Secret Service first started protecting our presidents and that protective role with respect to the president, vice president, and other dignitaries has grown substantially since that time. The men and women of the Secret Service conduct themselves with valor and professionalism while carrying out the protective function of their agency. They provide protection for a variety of people and events, including the president and national special security events. 
The Secret Service has other important functions which also deserve recognition. For example, the investigative role of the Secret Service has expanded greatly from protecting the currency against counterfeiting to investigating a wide variety of crimes related to this country's financial institutions and credit systems. I commend the gentleman from Florida, Representative Tom Rooney, for his work on this bill, and I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 347. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Georgia reserves his time. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield as much time as he may consume to the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Rooney, who is the sponsor of this legislation, also a member of the Armed Services Committee and a former member of the Judiciary Committee. The gentleman from Florida, Mr. Rooney, is recognized for as much time as he wishes to consume. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, the protections provided by United States Secret Service are vital to assessing security threats and providing a secure environment for our nation's leaders. One key aspect of the service's mission is to secure buildings and grounds where our leaders work and live, including the White House and the Naval Observatory. My bill would explicitly protect these residences of the President and the Vice President from intruders and would clarify current law to distinguish between those who are able to enter the grounds lawfully like the Secret Service and those who enter without permission. This bipartisan bill would improve existing criminal law to ensure that the Secret Service can continue to implement strategies that prevent potentially catastrophic security breaches. I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting this common sense bipartisan piece of legislation to protect our nation's leaders and national security. I thank Mr. Smith from Texas for his leadership on this issue and the Judiciary Committee, as well as Mr. Johnson from Georgia. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back his time. The gentleman from Texas reserves. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Uh, if the gentleman from Texas is uh, ready to uh, conclude, then I will uh, uh, have an announcement. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we are prepared to close and have no further speakers. All right. Well, uh, in that case, I will uh, uh, waive the balance of my time. The gentleman from Georgia yields back the balance of his time. The gentleman from Texas. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time as well. Both sides have yielded back all time. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and concur in the Senate amendment to H.R. 347? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative. That I request the yeas and the nays. The yeas and nays are requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. To, pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question will be postponed. Okay. Pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the Chair declares the House in recess until approximately 6.30 today.